Well, earlier in the show, we made a delicious autumn squash risotto, and you know what would have gone perfectly with that? What? A nice glass of wine. You know, I couldn't agree more, and I now have a newfound respect for those making the wine. In today's day in the life, I stopped by Layton's Chance Vineyard and Winery, and I quickly realized a lot more goes into making the wine than just stomping on some grapes. The last I heard, there was only one guy who could turn water into wine, but he hasn't performed that miracle in nearly 2,000 years. For the rest of us, it takes a lot of time, hard work, and knowledge to make a nice bottle of vino. Just ask William Layton. This fourth generation farmer and his wife Jennifer got into the wine business as a way to carry their family farm into the future. I believe that the future of farming is niche farming, is, is uh, finding something that consumers want that you can provide to them, uh, local products, and winery fit in, wine fit in really well with that. We could look, grow local grapes, sell it directly to, to uh, people here on the consumers here on the Eastern Shore, and uh, I really like that. And so in 2007, the Laytons planted their first grapevine. Two years later, they built a winery and made their very first wine. For us, the agriculture is what we love. My, my family's been in agriculture for four generations. Um, and so growing the grapes and then being able to make a product that people love out of those grapes that we grow is more of the po point of it for us, to be able to grow something on our farm. Today, that farm consists of 14 acres of grapevines that are growing five different types of grapes. So you guys actually pick all of the grapes you guys use to make your wine by hand. That seems like a lot of work. Why do you do that? Uh, it is a lot of work, but we're not quite big enough yet to uh, afford a mechanical harvester, and picking by hand gives you really good quality grapes. So these ones are ready to go. Uh, show me, give me a, a lesson. How do I harvest one? I, you gave me this tool. What's this called? This, this is a grape fork. A grape uh, fork? This is what we use for harvesting. Um, it's a little safer to use than, than clippers themselves, um, because all you've got to do, uh, you come up, all of the grapes are going to be harvested at one time, so you don't really have to pick and choose which one's right. So you pick the uh, bunch you're going to pick and you just press that right through and pull the bunch off. That's simple. All right, I'm gonna give it a try. Okay. I'm gonna pull this one. Good job. So you actually taste these. I mean, how do they taste? I mean, I'm gonna taste one, but are they bitter? That, no, uh, people expect the grapes because the wine ends up dry and, and just slightly bitter uh, to be that way. But when we pick them, the grapes are extremely sweet, much sweeter than table grapes because that we need a lot of sugar to get the alcohol in the wine. Yeah, these are actually really good. Very good. Harvest season runs from late August to mid-October. And on a typical day, a team of 12 people can pick half an acre of grapes. All right, so after the grapes are picked, I guess it's time to press them. So should I start taking off my shoes and socks, or has there been advancements in technology? Yeah, uh, we've got machines that do that now. Uh, we've got a machine called a press. Uh, it's got an airbag inside, so once we fill it with grapes, the airbag blows up and uh, squeezes the grapes and presses all the juice right out of it. All right, so basically all we do is just dump the grapes in here. Yes. Like, let me see. <laughs> Like that? It's close, but what you want to do is be able to get this up over your head and then pour it in ah, nice and easy. So you rest it on the edge. Yes. I knew there was an easier way. This press can fit up to 1,500 pounds of grapes, and yes, they are all loaded by hand. This is hard work. They, in turn, produce about 110 gallons of juice. From there, the juice is transferred to a settling tank where it sits for 24 hours before being pumped to a fermenting tank. Throughout the entire process, William is testing the juice for acidity, pH level, and sugar content. Wine is a combination of art and chemistry. Um, I went back and took uh, two semesters of chemistry at community college, um, plus the winemaking classes I, I took, um, to learn how to deal with the pH and the acids in the wine and uh, the sulfites that you need to, to uh, help preserve the wine and the sugars and how they turn into alcohol and all, all that is a chemical process. Um, but to go to learn the art of it, I go to other winemakers to turn, learn the taste and the blending and how it ages and, and these are things that, that no instrument can tell me. After all the levels are correct, yeast is added to start the fermentation process 
and in a few months, it'll be ready to be bottled. Now, from vine to bottle takes about six months, and this year alone, they're expected to make around 130,000 bottles of wine. We have just one of them here today, and I guess the only thing left to do now is taste it. It is. So what are we trying? Uh, what we're trying today is our Traminette. It's the grapes that we were pressing earlier. It makes a really nice dry white wine, very similar to Riesling. And I'm especially proud of this one uh, because we just won a gold medal for this wine last month in the Maryland Governor's Cup competition. Cheers. This is really good. While the awards are nice, for William, they're not the best part of the job. It's amazing to me as a whole, making the wine and going through and, and tasting it from beginning to end, and then once you have it bottled and out for sale, to have people that come up to you and tell you how much they love that wine. That you've created that, I've spent my time on it and, and, and worried about it, and to have somebody so love it and appreciate it is just a, an amazing feeling. Now I just want to make this clear, you don't actually have to pick each individual grape off the vine. The, I guess, stem is filtered out in the press and in the settling tank. Now besides making a great bottle of wine, the folks at Layton's Chance are also very good at hosting events and coming up next weekend is the 6th Annual Harvest Festival. It's being held on Saturday, September 26th from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. The festivities start off with a Vineyard Dash 5K and throughout the day there will be grape stomping, hay rides, live music, tours of the winery and just so much more. Admission is $5 if you're over 21. For all you under 21ers, it's free to enter and it's a lot of a lot of fun stuff. It's always a good time at Layton's Chance. I got to actually help them bottle the wine once and that was a lot of fun. Yes. And we want to thank you for watching Delmarva Life. Join us tomorrow. Imagine your child needs a heart transplant to stay alive. Well, that was the reality for one local family. We'll learn about his condition and find out how he's doing today. Many families with a sick child must travel far from home to get the care they need and spend weeks, even months, in a hospital. Find out how the Ronald McDonald House gives those families a home away from home and how you can help. Delmarva Life, life at its best here on Delmarva. Don't go anywhere. WBOC News at 6 starts right now.